everyone it is danny and welcome to this update this morning i hope you're doing fantastic now we are going to be talking about the current frontal system but another which models have been pretty consistent about and we're even hinting at potential development of a low pressure area so on the current infrared satellite imagery we can see all that activity stretching through parts of the bahamas uh, Bermuda and further out into the Atlantic. Meanwhile, for the Caribbean, much isn't really going on right now, but the intertropical convergence zone is a little bit active. We're seeing all that convection in uh, parts of the Atlantic and over into the Pacific as well, including Colombia. We can see that thunderstorm activity moving through. So those white dots are indicative of lightning strikes. As we zoom in here, we can see a better look at what is going on for the Bahamas. So parts of the northern Bahamas are experiencing some uh, thunderstorm activity this morning, even with uh, some heavy rain moving by as well. But for the Caribbean on a whole, nothing much is really happening. But uh, let's look at the rainfall forecast for today. So this is what Euro is showing. We can see all that uh, rainfall accumulation expected throughout the end of the day for the Bahamas. So there could be some additional periods of some heavy downpours here and there, but uh, the southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands will likely be on the drier side. Of course, some showers are possible, but in terms of uh, a lot of substantial rain, that's not really expected. Parts of Cuba may also experience some downpours, maybe heavy at times in some areas. In our parts of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, going toward Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and maybe some spots in the Lesser Antilles. There may be a few passing showers, but rainfall activity is not likely to be very widespread. ABC Islands, we're seeing that little dry pocket over there. So we're seeing that the rainfall chance for today is pretty much non-existent for the ABC Islands and parts of northern Venezuela. The Guyanas may experience some showers moving by, as I showed you in Colombia, there is some activity, so there may be some additional rainfall. And as we look towards Central America, in parts of Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, uh, going to Costa Rica, Panama, there may be some shower activity around, but not guaranteed to be widespread across the area. Winds. So it is a bit windy right now in the Gulf and also offshore of the U.S. with that frontal system making its way out. And also parts of the Eastern and Central Caribbean. So as the map becomes more colorful with these shades of purples, blues, it is indicating those stronger Wind. So it's going to be a windy day across the East Lesser Antilles, even for uh, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and also the ABC Islands, as we can see. Then as we're going to be heading through today, things calming down a bit in the Gulf, still a bit windy, especially uh, in the Bay of Campeche and for northern, uh, the northern Yucatan, as we can see there, and for parts of the Bahamas, and of course in the southeastern Caribbean for the Windward Islands, going towards the ABC Islands. But things may be a little bit on the calmer side for the northern islands of the region. Now, how about that next system? How about that increase in rainfall? Well, GFS and Euro are certainly agreeing on the ICON model as well. So we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of the runs to see what they're expecting. So all these green shadings are indicative of the precipitation rate and those areas of yellows, oranges, reds indicate heavier rainfall and there we have the forecast time. So let's see what GFS is showing. There is a current front moving out, and then as we head to the end of this week, there's that next system. And then as that front makes its way out, there the model is showing yet another uh, low pressure system developing. And we see all that activity moving through the north. But take a look at this. We see an increase in moisture for the eastern islands of the Caribbean. So very interesting, and it would certainly be a huge help because many of these areas have not experienced any substantial rain in quite some time. But that front is expected to move through. It's likely to bring increased rainfall activity as we head into early next week uh, across parts of the northern Caribbean. And then we can see that area of increased moisture loitering around in the east. Now we head on to Euro. Euro is showing something pretty similar here. We see that low pressure system moving up north and the associated front making its way through parts of the Bahamas uh, in northern Caribbean. And Euro is also showing that increase in moisture over in the eastern islands of the Caribbean. Going towards the ICON model, we're seeing yet a similar story. All this rainfall activity moving through parts of the northern Caribbean, Cuba, uh, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, even towards the uh, northern Lesser Antilles, the Leeward Islands over there as well. Now, uh, ICON does not go as far out compared to the uh, GFS and the Euro models, but 
we can see that for the most part, these three models are in agreement. And before uh, yesterday, Euro was actually showing a chance of seeing development with that low pressure system. So sometimes when these systems are offshore, the U.S., they can actually manage to gain some tropical characteristics as not fully become a tropical cyclone, but they can become subtropical cyclones. And uh, this area right here is certainly not uncommon to see as an area of pre-season development. So many systems, they may uh, form from these frontal systems making their way out. This is what the Euro Ensemble map looked like yesterday. And the more of these different strokes or members we see, the higher the chance of actually seeing something within the area. So there were a couple of members, not a great density of them, but uh, they, have, they were hinting at development, but the chance has since decreased. The amount of members have since decreased. So I definitely think that preseason development is possible this year. I would say likely as well, especially as we head into April and May. May is currently the month with the most cases of off-season development. So provided that uh, the season is likely to be very active and we can see that the conditions are getting in place, I definitely think that we're going to see preseason development. And uh, this is a look at the GFS simulated infrared satellite imagery showing all the convection. This is as we head to Monday, Tuesday, and going to the middle of next week, we see all that increase in activity loitering around parts of the Eastern Caribbean. So as I said, that would be great in terms of bringing well-needed rainfall activity to some areas. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys posted on it because at the end of the day, these are all model runs and there can be changes with them. But both the GFS and the Euro are in agreement with uh, that increase in moisture near the Lesser Antilles. So uh, I'll be keeping you guys posted on it throughout the week. And uh, this is also the week where we're going to be hearing which names are retired from last hurricane season. If there will be any retired from uh, the Atlantic season last year, we'll also hear about the Pacific, whether uh, some names will be retired over there. I mean, Otis was a disaster. I mean, it was uh, it's the strongest system to make landfall in Mexico. So I have high confidence in Otis being retired. But I'll let you guys know of the updates once they are out and uh, that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update video and so i really do hope that you found it to be very informative however if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments i'll respond to you when i get the chance to do so and remember to always be weatherwise